totally take you out of the game. Yeah, I mean, they left a throwaway ban when they played Curse, and Curse is the top team. So let's see what they do this champion select. Immediately banning out that Draven. Yep, absolutely. Wanting to get that out of there. The AD carries get both double of the first bans. <laughs> yeah, uh, they are both very iconic AD carries here. We've, Wild Turtle is Draven, as double lift is to Vayne. Right, here, yeah. So. Uh, oh, very, SAT very uh, good bands here. And then they go with the Nocturne. So they're going with uh, last week's play from TSM. They saw TSM's return to the global comp that they used in Season yep. 2 so successfully. They used the Shen, they used the Nocturne, they used that Karthus, and they want to get a couple of those pieces out of the puzzle first. And I expect to see that Karthus come out quite soon as well from these bands if it's not the last one from Counter Logic Gaming. Because it looks like, oh, we're actually going to see the Vladimir going out, which kind of is effective with the Karthus Hemo Plague Ultimate, which is what we saw Vulcan running mm -hmm. quite a bit. And Dyrus is really, uh, he's a big fan of Vladimir, who hasn't been, you know, on the forefront uh, for a lot of these teams. He hasn't been picked a whole bunch, but mm -hmm. he, he hasn't got a lot of changes, and he's still just a really powerful AoE mage yep. um, that they could use in a double AoE comp. Expecial did say in the interview after last week, that they have plenty more things they haven't even had to show yet, and they might bring them out in Super Week. Had to show or want to show? Because we want them to show it. It's with, if the other team has to force them to, then we may never have to, that right? So sad. we want them to show these things. We'll have to see. Malphite was the last one banned out. It's been on Dyrus twice this season. So he's not going to be the one that really wants it. They just want it out of hot shot. GG Sans. This is probably the easiest pick to call versus CLG. Choster will always play Jarvan if he can get him. Uh, it's that and his Lee Sin. When he's forced onto these other utility junglers, yep. he really has not performed. His Maokai last week was left a lot to be desired. <laughs> You could say that. They kind of give him a hard time in the jungle. That's why I kind of shy away from Maokai lately, right? He's uh -huh. really easy to punish, hard to come back with in that late game if you do punish him. And I guess anybody would have that problem if you get punished in the early game. We'll see what happens. Loud Mortis actually talking about getting punished on junglers. We saw him take aggressive Jarvan. So everybody's switching things up here for Super mm -hmm. Week. They're really not, I guess, jumping out of their comfort zone, but making it bigger. Yeah, I mean, Chopsted had a really good game in that first Jarvan game. Mm -hmm. uh, they got rolling against Dig. They absolutely just destroyed them. They yeah. kept uh, Cutie Pie and Scar each from getting any kills or any assists even. That was pretty harsh. Uh, and that was due a lot to the early map pressure that he can put on with that Jarvan. Yeah. And that he really likes playing that Jarvan and that Lee Sin because they can get around the map and they have uh, these interesting mobility moves. So going the jungler, knowing what they want to play safe, they go ultra poke in the bottom lane and that Caitlyn Sona. And we'll see what CLG decides to hover over here. We'll see if they have picked up Zed in their repertoire of uh, champions. A, uh, a Caitlyn Sona bottom lane, that just means you have instant tower pressure early game. <laughs> TSM, they already exactly. have a really strong early game. Um, they're going to be looked to pushing to be pushing down those turrets. Maybe even going in for those uh, three mm -hmm. versus one dives that they were so uh, happy with early in the season. They they just kept on returning to that strategy over and over. Uh, now we're just having Link spam around. It looks like CLG going to take a little time as they decide their couple their uh, next two picks. It's probably one of those keep Link on the outside comps. We'll see him locking in Lux if he does lock in, unless they go support. So it looks like mm -hmm. safety for Jarvan on the jump in, as well as peel for Twitch for the safety. It's more safety. <laughs> safety, safety. It's all about safety for double. You like helmets and elbow CLG. pads coming in on this uh, one. They have the Vayne off the, off the picks uh, already because they yep. banned him out, and then they took Caitlyn for, for TSM here. So he goes right to his Twitch. Very, very strong Twitch player. We saw him outplay Mega Zero last week, too. That fed Riven, he even uh, got down to the last hit there. That was very impressive. Really Twitch playing mechanics. In the mind of your opponent. Yeah, so That's maybe great. we'll see some more Twitch mechanics. Today, Reg or, uh, the, uh, the Dyrus Jace will be interesting um, because that actually adds a lot more poke comp. And when you already have Caitlyn and Sona, then that's a pretty good. Uh, First three poke champions right yeah. there. Odd one, uh, really liking that Nasus so far. This will be interesting. I think this is Dyrus' first time here coming in on Jace this season. And uh, going back and just, I think it was just hovering over my friends list maybe last week, Dyrus was playing Zed. And then 30 minutes later, they were in uh, a scrim where Reginald was playing Zed. So it's cool mm -hmm. to see these guys. Obviously, Dyrus would play Zed. He 
said, you play in the top lane, so does Dyrus. But that they play each other's champions in a way, it just kind of happens so. But you know what he can, each other can do in a fight now. You know what's going to happen. You can just initiate so much stronger. Yeah, and it opens up all that. those uh, options for mind games. Exactly. And the, and the picks around. and bans, which have become so important. These picks and bans, really, a lot of people have been just calling the whole game after they see pick and ban phase. Yep. Um, and you actually have pretty good chances. There's the, the all-important Nidalee <laughs> for CLG. Not only do they have Hotshot, Hotshot Nidalee GG, but Link is one of the one of the yep. top North American Nidalee players. <laughs> he loves, just loves the AP Nidalee mid. And we actually see Macy Reginald going for that Zed pick mm -hmm. uh, for the aggression onto Nidalee. And how is Nidalee versus AD casters? We haven't seen that matchup coming out. Nidalee's really good at not losing her lane. Uh, so AP and Italy. Safe. Yeah, she's gonna be trying to farm. The thing is, Reggie's extremely aggressive, and either Zed or Fizz are very good at just all inning. Those those are very bursty champions. If you misstep at all with that Nidalee, um, then he could 100% you. The Kazakhs as well. It looks like they want an assassin. They haven't decided on which assassin they want for that mid lane, but they want some more damage on their team, and they do cycle full all the way around back to Karthus. Reggie has come home. He took a lot of criticism, actually, for just only playing Karthus in the end of Season 2 there. People were saying, you know, that's all he's got just because Karthus is a very safe mid laner. Yep. But he is an extremely good Karthus. Even though he hasn't practiced it um, that much this season, he was a terror in Season yep. 2 with it. And they choose this, choose this coming in with a few of the things they don't want as well, right? Or they don't have that they want, right? That Nocturne, possibly for more global. We kind of see Odd One playing that once in a while, and also the Shen, which they bend out themselves, so they know what they're getting into here. They know that they're going to have to kind of wait it out to six to really see the impact of that presence from, from Reginald. So in CLG, uh, with that last pick, uh, Cho'Gath going to be switched up there to Hotshot. That's definitely his, one of his top three most comfortable champions. He's been playing that for in the three base. years. He has been playing that for three years. <laughs> we are into match four here. Your first day of Super Week. Team Solo Mid facing off against Counter Logic Gaming. Team Solo Mid has been able to take the last two games versus CLG, and they look to even the score with this one at two and two, if they can do it. It looks like Dyrus actually heading up to that top lane on purple side. So usually the purple side does do a two versus one switch so that their uh, AD does not have to deal with the double golems advantage, but TSM spreading out just like a, a normal North American team would have. Just spreading it out, the line of scrimmage, setting it up. Very curse-like, if you will, not putting down any wards just yet for Team Solo mid side. They're playing this one really safe. And really, the, the the time before, they kind of played it just to wait, watch where their opposing team ran around, and then they went and placed all the wards. Here we go, coming in. Reginald going to be seen, but only going to take a spear from Nidalee. So they're going to walk out of this one. Both teams have vision of each other now, and it looks like it's just going to be the aggressive ward placements to get out. Yeah, that CLG team really doesn't have too much hard CC. They would have to rely on a rupture landing. This doesn't. They don't have any bindings or anything for a, for a level one. But they just wanted to get that deep ward into the jungle, so they'll know where the odd one is going. Um, that Nasus, not too much of an early threat anyway, but any extra information you can have on the jungler's presence always extremely useful. Meanwhile, down bottom we see a special and wild turtle in position to stop the double golem advantage here for double lift and afrim we'll have to see if they face check this or if he uses invisibility level one how is double lift going to handle this as we see what they're going to do not too exciting <laughs> one shot fired yep they aren't going to do too much it looks like backing off on wild turtle side and we actually see as we look around link i see him taking barrier as i remember correctly when uh Dignitas Ascara played it. He actually took Barrier on that as well. So we'll see how he utilizes that against this composition. There isn't much crowd control, so it works in his favor. I like what TSM did here. They they wanted to keep the one versus one top so that Hotshot on his Cho'Gath with his teleport wouldn't be the one that they're going up against with this Caitlyn Sona because Cho'Gath is actually really good at one versus two. And when you add that teleport in there, it just gives him another free back and it's going to be that much longer before they could take a turret. So they were actually ably, uh, successfully able to stop the double golems and leave a ward behind there. So if we do have Chaucer coming bottom anytime soon, they will see him unless he comes from the very... Unless it goes over that dragon wall, that'd be about it. Now, if they hit two, since they went for golems and they try to all-in this, could that be a forward ward for 
hot shot to teleport to, or is it too early for that? He would lose his lane. Well, they're both going to hit two around the same time. They only got the small golem, which does not add okay. a lot of experience. And that ward is in a very good placement early for Hotshot to pull off a gank. But Hotshot may have his hands full up there with Dyrus, who does has a, have a knockback on Jace. Right. All right, so we'll see as the AD carries and supports battle it out in the bottom lane. I always kind of say that the support wins the lane a little bit more than the AD carry just right-clicking. It's where the support can zone how well they're warding and really keeping the AD carry safe. We can see a special in front of Wild Turtle there trying to get that zone on. Yeah, so uh, you know how I said the only way Chaster could get to that bottom lane is if he went over the back of the Dragon Wall. He went over the back of the Dragon Wall. He went middle instead and didn't get anything out of it. But he was being extremely tricky. He got through the wall of wards from TSM. It's, it's one of the reasons people actually state they choose Jarvan is because you, because you can do things like that. Clicky D, really one of those that would quote be quoted saying, I picked Jarvan because you can be so sneaky with your initiations. We see Nasus moving around towards mid as the odd one starts to hover towards the top side. He's going to get Dyrus backing though, so it doesn't look like we're going to get too much action in that lane. We'll just have to see what happens from here on out. Four minutes in, not too much of a separation. The gold, Chouster looks to make presence in the bottom lane. His double buff, not even close to wearing outs here but he is seen by a ward, so it looks like he may just have to use that on the camps. Yeah, Special still has that ward um, a little bit far back. Jarvan does have some, some good uh, distance gaining moves, but he's going to back right off here. And you can see the early game played out just how TSM wanted it. Once they saw the entire team line up, they played it perfectly. They were able to stop the double golems, and they were able to keep that one versus one top that you that they wanted. Mm -hmm. So now both the bottom lane and the top lane are slightly ahead and... and and minions. Oh, now they're even. <laughs> and we see the odd one returning actually with Dyrus. So they planned this together coming back with Dyrus actually only getting a tier to stack that up. But he does have the red pot. So if they can get a good initiation here, they may be able to do some damage. I don't think they have the crowd control to take him out fully though. See, the problem with this strategy here, um, having a Nasus lane gank, you don't have that much um, uh, crowd control. And, yeah. and Hotshot is a very, very defensive player. That might might work against like a Void Boy or something, but look at Hotshot there. They actually flash for it. They get the knockback. It's going to be close, but he's just going to be able to walk out of the turret. It's going to zone the lane. They missed that. That would have been huge because he wouldn't be able to chug those pots and really keep himself there. They would have done a second dive, but it's going to be traded on the other side. He goes right through the ward. It's going to be the flag toss. The uh, Caliber Nat would probably get Turtle out, and Ooh. they are going to go for the second dive anyways. They must have hit some extra damage there. <laughs> so even though uh, Hotshot is a defensive player, <laughs> they do end up just Power diving it. Dyrus has his red elixir, and they've got the damage to they follow heard it up. You. They heard you. Like, yeah. you got to make Kobe wrong. Go, dive. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, success there for TSM. Not only did they get those lanes to play out the way they wanted, but the first gank does pay off. So going in very strong onto Hotshot in the top lane. He does have the teleport, so he can get back. His buy is a Doran shield. Looks like he's going to help himself in lane just to stay there, mitigate some of that damage. Next special, again, looking to zone this out and get any more pokes on to keep them from going back. And they're going to look to push this right into the turret as soon as possible. That was uh, Dyrus showing that he deserves his all-star spot. Yeah. So at six minutes in, only that little bit of action in the top lane will let everybody know really where the aggression is and what needs to be helped. It's whether they go up and kind of give Hot Shot a little bit of help now. His flash is down, so he has to play careful, or do they start to focus on other lanes and get a consistent win for each one? Well, if we go by um, the the general rules of solo queue ganking, where you leave <laughs> the losing lanes to themselves, then Shasta would ignore Hotshot. Um, and he definitely... Oh, we're looking for some uh, exchanges up here top. Hotshot does have Feast now, so that true damage is always good um, if they do decide to go gank, because Cho'Gath actually in lane has some pretty good um, CC with that rupture and that silence. If they did combo with... Um, the flag toss there from Chaz, so they could get something. Smiles on the faces of everyone, but this is a game of tears right now. The third <laughs> one picked up by Reginald. Dyrus has one. Link's charging his up as well. Crimea River by the end of this one for sure, Kobe. 9,500 to 8,500, so that's 1,000 in the lead. That's not really going to be any core items finished unless we see the objective in favor of TSM soon. So CLG still holding on behind that first blood here at seven minutes. Looks like blue buffs are finally going to start to be transferred over to their respective lanes, and that may start to turn the tide of some things. We see Reginald start the roam, and this may mean Dragon. Yeah, both of these teams don't want to rush through the game. They're going for that long game. They've got the tiers stacking. It looks like TSM will get this. With Dyrus contesting that blue, they've got some good vision over there. They know Hotshot's not going to teleport, and they get that one for free. So we see Spirit of the Ancient Golem 
or a stone rather being picked up and uh, we see the Madrids on Chouster. So clear going in here. Odd one looking to give the blue buff over as well. So the jungles differ a little bit there in their builds. We'll probably see that locket coming out for both of them at first as well. Chaucer went with the invade here, but he was seen by that river ward. So they know he's inside the red side jungle somewhere. Odd one's going in here to investigate the detective. Oh, he's going to be a little bit too late on this red buff, though. He may be able oh, to get it. Can he get time. the Q on? No, he does not. And the smite was used to grab that from Chaucer. He gets himself over the wall. Link there to assist with the heal. And it looks like they watch that one walk away. Ooh, we cut away right before we saw that spear. Chunk Reggie. See, these are both late game AP mids. Uh, it's just a little bit different strategy. Reggie is all about the AOE magic damage, taking down the whole team late game, whereas Link is a poke-oriented AP mid. He just wants to throw out spear after spear, hoping that one will land on one of those high-priority targets like an AD carry or a support. And it really comes down to mechanics. And I really like seeing Reginald Karthus because he's also one, as we see a gank coming to the bottom lane, to start a fight with Requiem and end a fight with Requiem if he hasn't used it yet. Hotshot taking more damage in the top lane. His flash is not up yet. They may have called the timer on that. I'll give him a thumbs up for it. <laughs> so good one, good job by Odwin there, just going back to the to the weak lane. Uh, the rules are kind of opposite. If you're going against a yeah. uh, a lane yeah. and you got that lane down, you want to continue to visit that lane while the teleport and the flash are both down. They're rewarded now with a turret. So it just played out exactly how they wanted to. Hotshot's not known for you know winning his one versus one lane, and that's exactly what TSM were counting on, and it paid off. Defensive items. Still something he can get under his belt. We'll see how much gold Hotshot has right now. It looks like he actually only has 100 gold to himself. He picked up that flask to continuously regen on top of that Doran's. It's giving him health with that passive as he kills stuff. So that's kind of a, definitely a tough lane for him. He knows he's in the long haul, and he'll just really be pushing his lane away from his turret right now. And really, with well, when you have a Jarvan jungler uh, going up a na going up against a Nasus jungler, you really want something to, to happen for your team early game here. But the lanes have just been playing out against him, and Chaucer wasn't able to make anything happen. So he might get into that late game phase where he's just a very squishy Jarvan. That when he does go in for his dunk combos, he just gets exploded. Meanwhile, the odd one is a full level above him. And we just see actually odd ones. I believe his smite came up from being in the jungle. And 10 minutes in here, Reginald with the ult, everybody kind of getting ready to start mobilizing. This is probably where Reggie starts to make the calls. We may see coming out for that dragon soon. These guys going to start playing quite strong, or the next dragon, I should say. Yeah, Dyrus wants to go clean up this top lane. The top turret, still very healthy. Hotshot's going to have a hard time. Crescendo on the bottom lane, Aphromoo forced to use the ultimate out. They're actually going spray and pray on this. The tick is not going to be enough. He gets one more hit on and his sponge is in range. Does he give himself away though? The oh, shield comes yes. out. The last hit, he actually takes it. Reginald was like, kill secured. Wild Turtle says, no, thank you. <laughs> oh, too bad, Reggie. No assist for you. <laughs> now, Chouster is coming down this river, and Wild Turtle's running already, so it looks like his instincts were good. They tipped him off at the Ooh. beginning, and Chouster Hot does not heels. get in for the answer. So a great move there by Wild Turtle. A little bit too much aggression by Doublelift. I think they overplanned with the shield there from Aphromoo, but still kills going back and forth. CLG pick up a bit of gold in that manner. That's a BF sword for double lift. That's close to either a direction of the Bloodthirster or the Infinity, Infinity Edge for Wild Turtle, most likely the Infinity Edge. So usually, um, you would say that if someone steals away the kill before that Karthus ultimate lands, and you're like, oh, scumbag, you denied me an assist. Um, an unassisted kill is only worth you know, 300 gold, right. but if you get that assist on it, you get that extra 50% for your team. The only thing is, Expesso had already damaged him, so they didn't lose anything out by doing mm -hmm. by doing that. It's just that now the gold goes to Wild Turtle instead of Reggie, and Wild Turtle definitely happy to turn that one into an Infinity Edge as soon as he can, as he's already got the BF Sword and the Pickaxe. And it really would have been the best of both worlds. Either of them got the kill, right? Ooh. Oh, Chouster coming in from the bottom. More helping from him. Here we go. Expecial looks to go down. The health bar shredded. Turtle needs to be careful here. He did go quite aggressive in that last fight, and his summoners are down. So you can see Chouster definitely is a little squishier than usual. He had to use his flash to get out of that one, but they were rewarded with a kill. They called the, the Sona flashes down, come mm -hmm. back to this lane. She's she's a slow-moving target, very low health. We'll land one now. Hotshot again! Oh, he hits him back the wall just to the side, but they may have enough damage. That front end and the follow-up damage is just going to be too much for his health bar. Goes down 5-2. to two. Turtle gets some aggression in the bottom lane as well.
You just feel so bad for a hot shot. They're picking on the baby Cho'Gath there. Anytime you keep that Cho'Gath at the base size where he gets no fee stacks, then he's just really not that threatening tank that he wants to be. And like we talked about, hot shot always just building the, the resistances and yeah. the armor. That really backfires if you aren't able to keep your fee, fee stacks up because you need that base health to make those resistances effective. Having your tank be focusable is not really something you want to have brought to the table, especially about 15 minutes into the game is really, like we said, everybody's mobilizing. We're going to get this problem maybe transferred over. I think Jace is actually going to grab this up, so Dyrus gets it for the spam as they're probably going to start pushing these objectives now and start crushing down the turrets. Yeah, so the Dragon's coming up in ten, almost 10 seconds here, um, and they probably will be looking to contest that. As Reggie has gone top, he can still add his ultimate to this. So Reggie's not going to be in the fight if they decide to contest, but at least he can add a lot of damage with his ultimate. Meanwhile, for CLG, Link is their Shining Star right now. He is their hope. He is out CSing Reggie pretty well in the middle here, and he's got the nicely large ride. Okay, they're going with the Requiem. There it is, the Requiem to start the fight. Not doing too much damage yet, and really not a deterrent for CLG. They stare TSM straight in the eyes, and it looks like they are going to stay here for the full fight. Dragon just about half health. Spiritfire beautifully separating the team. It's going to be Link on the top side, and the Shark Blast clearing HP bars for Logic Gaming, but nobody followed the odd one. He went in a little too hard, and asked Zalti to go off, expunged to take him down. Team Solo mid with a bit miscommunication there. None of the troops following the general into battle right there. He looked over his shoulder, <laughs> and no one was behind him. The rest of CLG just got a free kill right there. That was almost how TSM planned it. They wanted to try and delay CLG, try and scare them off a little bit with that Requiem, and delay the dragon, just wait for the dragon to do as much damage as it could. But when they finally did go in, they were not rewarded. And it looks like CLG gains a little positioning off of this one and will be able to take down mid turret if Reginald can't put down some defense here. And I think Link's going to have himself a turret. No, Link has to back off and it looks like TSM will, will grab this bottom turret. A teleport down from Hotshot in the bottom lane. It looks like he may have Link coming on his backside here. They get the silence onto Sona. Make sure he has to walk back from the rupture, giving Link more time to get there. They play this one perfectly. <gasps> the flash! Crescendo comes in. It can be finished by Chouster here. Gets the ultimate down. Finalizes the kill for Link. They're going to need to get out of this one. The odd one throwing down that wither could pick them up a kill, but there's just going to be too many numbers. TSM now pushing mid. Oh, special deserve to live for that one. I have to say, if it was up for me, up to me, I would have given him his life. He's had some really nice jukes, great crescendo, and a flash too. But TSM just decided to answer back with pressure middle, and look how much they did to that middle turret. They are still moving around. Link wants blood right now. He knows something's over the edge. He's looking to grab some sound or a bushwhack vision, but he does not get it. Looks like CLG could have pushed enough pressure towards TSM to grab this dragon, Kobe. Good answer from CLG. Now they're trying to burst it down. Odd one's the only one there, so this will be a smite war. Link's here to back oh. up Chopster, though, with an execute on top of it. So much damage over time from Dragon and Spirit Fire, and they can't stand the fight. Dyrus is trying to kite in as another fight towards Dragon on both sides of the screen. They finally take down the odd one. Dyrus is forced to run, and it looks like Counter Logic Gaming is just grabbing a whole bunch of momentum over the past two minutes. Minutes. Now it's TSM that are trickling in one man yeah. after another. CLG definitely doing a good job taking advantage of this. They forced the objective there, made Odd One come out a little bit too far, and he paid for it with his life and his ultimate. So we'll have to see as Team Solomid regroups now around the dragon. It seems like a bit of faltering is happening for them. The smite is up for the Odd One. We've heard that being a call before where they went in without smite and Things didn't go right, but they're really not deciding whether to fight or go for Dragon when they get there now. They have what they need, they just have to decide what they want to do. Link is really doing a great job for CLG, exactly what you want your AP Nidalee to do. He rushed that death cap, he's got the tier, so he's throwing out these spears to gain them objectives and get people low oh enough that they're able to take them for free. It looks like they want to contest the TSM on the fritz here. It doesn't look like they want they to go in. Have a pink. Dyrus is not there. It's going to be the dragon for CLG. That was just out of sheer power and strength. Knowing we're just a few members of Team Solo Mid where gave them the confidence to do that. Chouster's ultimate just came up, so they wouldn't have even really had it for that fight. That was pretty risky. So much of a power difference between Reggie and Link right now because he uh, Link went with that death cap first, and meanwhile Reggie's trying to get those uh, stackable items with the Rod of Ages on top of that tier. It's going to take a little bit before his damage output really gets to where he wants it. And as we take a look at those items and where the damage output is, Caitlyn and actually Doublelift on the Infinity Edge. I should say Caitlyn and Twitch both with the Infinity Edge. 
We look at the mids. No real core item yet for Reggie as he's still piecing together. Has the tier. He has his boots. Getting a little bit from that Blasting Wand as he's looking to finish the Rod of Ages. But it's up against the tier and a Rabadon. So those uh, Nidalee Spears are making a big impact. Team Solo mid looking to push their advantages here as they start to steal red buff. And they'll probably push down mid with this. It looks like they do want to group back up. There's not going to be a dragon for a long time. Both of the buffs for CLG are gone, so there's not really any hot points of contention that CL uh, that TSM can force right now. Reginald's actually going to stay on, on the outside here. He wants to get built up, probably wants to get a, a Zonia's under his belt as well so he can get into the fights, but I think he is. they are really going to go with this initiation of Requiem from other lanes, continue the push because Karthus is a ridiculous wave pusher. TSM have a pretty good answer for CLG's comp too. Mm -hmm. I mean, Sona with a Bulwark is a really good counter to an AP Middley, but it's going to take Expesso a long time to get the gold to finish that item. He's not, he hasn't even started the Aegis of the Legion yet, so the Bulwark is a long way off. Odd one taking a good amount of damage there. You can see the burst coming from that front end hit on the spear, and it was actually quite close. But special almost losing probably half his health there. Clear from the side. As they look to save this turret, but almost lose it as well. That could be the initiation for him. The gate goes down for the rush, but it looks like they will stay back. Chouster just waltzing in from the side. And you can see Dyrus actually built to try and Ooh. add uh, some poke pressure of his own for TSM. He's got cooldown reduction boots as well as Brutalizer and then the tier. So he can just continually fire off his Shock Blast, use his Acceleration Gate to get that extra distance, and hopefully try and answer for Link's Spears. And this is really ridiculous play, what TSM's doing. Giving the blue buff to Jace, Reginald stacking the tier early so he can keep the file on and just push lanes and sit there on double lift. Almost take him down, double lift, fighting the entire team. Somehow Aphrom, who saves him, maybe Requiem coming down it is going to be enough they do find the kill on double lift and it looks like tsm returns back to their own lane with that one kill yes they will yep it was clg getting a little too cocky right there double f wanted to pick a fight with reggie and he could not win the exhaust too strong had to burn the cleanse early backs off for the requiem to pull that one and this is going to give them the middle turret as well oh my gosh the shock blast from dire is so good like i was saying they give him the blue buff yeah, you can let a, uh, a Karthus do whatever he wants. You have the Siege Clear from Constant Shock Blast, and Karthus has Requiem from wherever he is. Such a good strategy to just keep the blue buff going to Jace here. The Shock Blasts are a little bit quicker than those Spears, too, so they're harder yep. to dodge if they do get the Acceleration Gate on them. A little bit less damage, though. We'll see what they do. They are going back. We'll see what kind of items they get. A mid turret is destroyed by Link. It's something they're going to have to give up after the pressure they just gave out so they can get their scaling into this game. We'll see the BF Sword picked up by Jace. That damage is going to start to sting a little bit more from the Shock Blast. And we do see Locket actually going out in the odd one. Like you said, that the Aegis could be coming out from Expecial here as we see him, uh, actually as we see Chouster rather building the Aegis for CLG. Yeah, and Reggie's going for that Seraph's Embrace right after this. So since he's already got a lot of extra mana with his Rod of the Aegis, uh, it's going to be a huge power spike for him when he finishes that item. Here's still t stacking for all three players that have had them uh, earlier in the game. And we see Hotshot still going his ways of building that defense. Finally gets a Giant's Belt for himself to build that Randuins as Reginald and crew start to push down middle. They're trickling in from behind. You can see CLG is spread out all across the map. They got to get back fast. This spike by TSM down the middle does force all the members of CLG to recall. And they're going to meet up. So one minute, 20 seconds left here before we get Dragon in. TSM is just kind of, like I said before, pushing their advantages. It's six to five. They don't really have a definitive walk in and start fighting uh, composition right now. They could still be taken out quite quickly with the damage that CLG puts out here. We've seen what Doublelift can do on his Twitch mechanics, so their initiations still have to be on point. You can tell what Silja are thinking right now. They want everything to be on this next oh, fight. They Lord. all have wards in their inventory. They have an Oracles, and they make a beeline for that Baron. What, what, They're going to finish it off while Wild Turtle's at bottom lane. 22 minutes into the game, the Oracles on Chouster lets them know they are completely safe here, but at this point, Baron is chunking them down. Each hit they're taking is almost putting everyone to half health. The Odd One tries to run in here, a crescendo across the whole team. Reptile coming into file, just shredding every one now can he stay in the middle one goes down to reginald they focus him but he gets a second one before that happens the requiem is not up for a few seconds it looks like the team continues to finish the fight and it's going to be clg on the back
TSM actually come out ahead in that one, even though Wild Turtle was already all the way at the bottom lane trying to clear that out. Odd One does not hesitate. He runs right in there, pops his ultimate, walks around in the Baron Pit, and buys Reggie time to put out that damage. All the AoE magic damage coming down, and now they're pressuring on this inhibitor turret. Double of getting into position to open up. No, he does not want to. Little these, too dangerous. These little engagements are putting Team Solo mid so far ahead. They may be losing one or two. Reginald lost himself, but he finished the Archangels there. They're power is just getting so much more vamped up every time they're dying in these fights because they're coming out on top. That's, he, that's the story. His his Archangel staff is almost stacked up to that tier, to, or to the uh, Seraph's Embrace. Mm -hmm. So once he gets that, he's also going to get that extra shield, and he's going to be able to pop that inside the team and be able to survive that much longer. So he's really hit that point. Since he started out with those uh, vamping items, like I said, it take a while for them to ramp up, but now he's hit the sweet spot. You know, it's really interesting to see you're not going for the Zonias. Maybe it has something to do, you know, with the blue buff, knowing you're not going to be, you know, or crushing the fight so long, and you're going to be in the side lanes trying to, to push down. So, doing a lot of different things here. Reggie always, Reggie always kind of switching up the builds. Yeah, I mean, both of these mid laners doing a really good job. I think the point is, look at the junglers. Chowster just completed his Aegis of the Legion. Mm -hmm. He's been pretty poor there. Uh, he's a little bit under the odd one, still one level behind. And he, this odd one has one extra aura, basically, that he's adding to that team with his locket. He can pop a shield for everybody. That's going to be 160 damage uh, shield on cooldown right now. Going around clearing out wards right now. Special looking to clear out a lot of the Baron wards. We'll have to see if that dance comes in quite soon. 25 minutes in, there is definitely enough damage on both teams to make that Baron fall. And it looks like the positioning right now is in Team Solomit's favor. So it's up to CLG to find a, a path through those wards. You can see how many wards they bought to every every member except for Double Lift, spending money on those site wards. And still, it hasn't done that much for them. They were hoping that it would allow them to grab that Baron. He spent so much money. Chaster went even deeper into debt yeah. grabbing that Oracles. So that's why he's really that poor right now. And it's, it's going to be CLG waiting and trying to bide their time here, hoping for some really good spears to land. They really uh, they have to hope for some amazing positioning. And to that end, they've all got a bunch of wards. And you can kind of almost predict the fights, right? Until the wards are gone, which actually a lot were just dropped by CLG. Until all those are gone and placed and then Oracle's out, nobody's going to fight. So once we, it's almost like a timer here. How many wards on the map? All right, they'll be killed, then we'll fight. We'll have to see what happens. TSM looks like they don't want to find the fight. They want to push and they want to make the fight come to them. And they are going to push CLG all the way around. And they may lose an inhibitor turret for this if they decide to go straight on. But they may get pinched as well. They've done a good job of zoning CLG from their own base. And here comes the minion line as they chase them deeper into the jungle. Wild Turtle getting free hits on this inhibitor turret. They just put up a wall of people and said thanks for the mid turret. No contest here unless Chowser decides to jump in on the initiation once the turret falls. It's going to be the odd one. Nasus just throwing on the ultimate. Chowster's taking quite a bit of damage. Reginald throws himself in. The Seraph's Embrace goes on. The Requiem to follow. And it looks like Team Solomid's going to be able to clean up this fight. Odd one still in the front. Front. And it looks like Turtle has enough to keep going, but they're backing off for now. Reggie overextended a little bit. The rest of the team wasn't quite mm -hmm. with him. He wanted to finish off Double Lift. He was very close to finishing off Double Lift. That's what he was hoping for. If they took out Twitch, then that would have been the inhibitor for them. Didn't quite get it there, though. So it's going to be one death for nothing. And CLG now hoping to turn that into Baron pressure. I don't think this is going to be a good idea. Shock Blast into Baron Den over and over is probably going to be able to stop this. They have a good amount of poke to be able to throw in. Special has to be careful on the outside here. They could just choose to go on him, and it looks like they're going to clear it out, gain positioning for the next go. They have a large minion wave top that will slowly push into that turret, but they can't really apply much pressure elsewhere because Reggie's right back up, and TSM can answer. Taking a look at these items now. Hotshot 0, 3 and 5 to a 3, 0 and 4. The 180 CS to the 158. So he's pulled back a few kills in his name with that CS, if you will, in terms of gold. And he's got an item under his belt that will completely help double lift. They're super building to be that peel for him right now because they need him this late game. 
Tower Sieging actually not that great for CLG. They can't dive. All they're really hoping for is by having TSM grouped up under their turret, CLG are hoping that it's easier for Link to land one of those spears. He's just trying to confine them so that he does get um, those max range ones landing. They weren't able to find any there, so they do back off as soon as Wild Turtle leaves the top lane. You can see him gathering in mid once more. They see double lift down in that bottom lane farming for a little bit. But it's going to be Wild Turtle also off of the group as well. They have to be careful on this initiation. They try to go over for Hot Shot and they push him off knowing he's not going to be in the next fight for a few seconds here. But he does have teleport. So let's we'll see what he does if he goes for that top lane to come back and help. There's just such a huge difference in move speed with the acceleration gate from Jace and the wall of pain from Reggie. Slows him down. Reginald does go in. Aceris is back up. We'll see when he triggers that. He actually dives very far into the fight. And Aceris and Brace isn't really going to help him too much. They're going to be forced to back out here. Might want to turn off that foul. It looks like they're going to just pause. So his flash is now down. Flash and exhaust. They got to be careful here with summoners starting to be blown. Hotshot's getting chunked down too, though. They're, the poke is working for TSM. They do finally get the inhibitor, and now they're going to back off. It should be TSM using their oracles now to gain the, the advantage around Baron, finally. Still, really, as we've seen in the past few weeks at the LCS, really, initially, very low CS games here with the minion kills at 250 at 30 minutes into the game. Usually, you kind of see it hit 220 at 20 minutes, rather, 300 at 30, if they're farming really hard. So, the objectives really in the eyes of these teams still going for the Dragons, going for each other. 9 to 8 here, 29 minutes into the game. And these guys are really looking to push this next inhibitor turret. TSM, a lot of map control right now. And it's they gave Reginald Karthus once again. He's been able to push top lane. And Requiem, like I said, has started and ended fights for them. And now Link has his Void Staff on top of his Sork Boots. So he's got the, the, the real core combo that you want in your AP mm -hmm. Nidalee. His Spears are going to be hurting no matter what. And again, they're just hoping... Hoping that he can catch out a wild turtle or an X-Special. We'll see what they can do. Dyrus still sporting the blue buff as they continuously give it to him. We talked about that earlier as Reginald was continuously stacking a tier all game. It's worked out really well for him and allows Reginald to be in a different lane. Allows Jace to be that poke and keep the siege off the turrets. See him pushing down here, trying to put a little bit of pressure on Con uh, Chouster rather, as they look to clear their own base. And CLG is really looking probably to put some wards out. You see there's only a few picked up right now, and it's going to be Chouster on a pink ward, so they're looking for that next objective fight. Another thing to look for is in the next fight, who is Chouster going to ultimate? Because last time he ulted the odd one there, and ulting Nasus is probably the worst cataclysm that you can throw. He wants to get this either a few squishy champions together so that double lift can spray and pray and hit multiple people, or he just wants to dive into the back line and finish off the Caitlyn. Neither of those were really options, and since he's so squishy, if he doesn't get one of those, then he's going to go down extremely quickly. It works out well, but what do you do when Caitlyn can dash out, and if you go on Dyrus, he'll just knock you out of your own ultimate? Exactly. He doesn't have that many options. Oh, At Reginald. this point, the free dragon is yeah. going to just add more gold on top of that differential right now, and TSM going to make use of this Oracle, clear out all the wards that CLG are spending all their money on here trying to get the advantage with the Baron Vision. The middle inhibitor is down, so every second that CLG spends over in this Baron area and not killing minions in one of the lanes means that their base is going to be pushed. The poke is just going so much in favor of TSM right now. Another shot onto Tauster. He's taken about four in a row, but better him than somebody else on his team. They're going to get this turret in the top lane pushed. 32 minutes in, Team Solo mid looks to pressure just in with the stranglehold on this game right now, they're forcing these turrets down. They have a huge minion wave in the top lane, and they may look to just, once again, poke over the wall. CLG. All they have to do is keep on waiting, keep on poking, making use of the fact that when an inhibitor is down, not only do you have those super minions in the middle, but the, the HP of your side lane minions is also increased, so you'll they'll slowly be pushing by themselves. Now they're pinging out Baron. They There's just a couple more wards that have been placed here by CLG. They are not frugal. Uh, with their ward purchasing. Now Hotshot's going to teleport in and try and take this with his feast. Reggie does see him, though. That's going to be a long-range feast if he gets it. 
They're going to back Plug right off in. of this one. TSM don't have to chance anything like that. They, they don't have to rush down a Baron. They can just back right off right now. And then look at this bottom wave. It's going to get that tower for free. The minion's doing work here. Chaucer decides to finally go in. Oh, it's the odd one in the front again. Does nope. he want to alt it? Chaucer going down instantly as he kind of flashed in for that one. It's going to be all on a double oh, lift God. right now. The Lulu ultimate goes off, but it's not going to be enough. Hotshot didn't really bounce anybody up. They're taking them out surgically one by one. They turn to the tank. It's going to be Link running for his life, and TSM gets a four for nothing. And that was the problem I was talking about when we saw the early game uh, denial of that Jarvan. He just, he's just so squishy now. He can't go on initiating here. If anyone for CLG is going to initiate, it's going to be Hotshot. Um, he's actually decently tanky now, but Chaucer just mm -hmm. goes down basically for free. DSM going to return to that Baron, and maybe they'll finally finish it off here. They do have Karthus, oh which is amazing at bringing that down. They've got plenty of time here. Baron buff for TSM. It looks like they are going to be able to take it down quite easy. They have Smite up just to make sure. Grab a little extra gold for himself on the side for Odd One. Baron goes over. Everyone's up to receive at 33 minutes. It's 13 to 8. It's going to be a pretty good gold lead here. 51,000 to 42,000 in favor of Team Solo Mid. That's going to be 7 to 2 in turrets in their favor as well. And one of those is that middle inhibitor turret. So they have the shortest lane to push down if they want to continue that aggression towards CLG. Yeah, CLG's uh, protect double lift uh, strategy also crumpled right there. As soon as Chaucer went down, the team broke and double lift was left exposed. That is the one person that you do not want on the front lines. Even um, even Hotshot was behind him there, and TSM just jumped on it, able to execute. Now they've got Baron buff, so the next team fight's going to be even more difficult. There's an exposed inhibitor at middle, so they can just run straight down. Uh, CLG probably don't want to fight under a turret. They'd probably just like to give up that middle inhibitor and then make some sort of last stand either at top or bottom. As we take stock again of the items here before a possible final fight in the game, the bulwarks are finished for both sides for that magic resistance reduction or mitigation, if you will, and look to pick up the inhibitor. It's now up, so CLG can kind of put themselves in front of it. Infinity Edges, the Last Whispers are finished. We do have the Phantom Dancer to the Zeal on the other side, but Caitlyn still with those headshots is going to be putting out so much damage. The inhibitor goes down, really no contest there, and no damage really traded. Yeah, so as you can't engage without a turret, they're trying to do as much as they can with the poke from Link, but it's just not sticking. Sona plus Bulwark plus Baron regen means that TSM all almost back right up at full health, and they just switch their sights to this top lane. Gonna push that one in next. We see Doublelift picking up the Quicksilver Sash, a Red Elixir onto Chouster, knowing they might need just a little bit more for this fight. The Home Guard's coming out on Aphromoo. And we do see actually Boots of Lucidity over on Expecial side, so he can continuously just throw out his spells and power cords and they can keep these fights going. This at this point, Home Guard Boots are the most effective buy for anyone on CLG because CSM are inside their base. There's a rupture, but CLG can't even go in off of that. They're so far behind. They have to wait for a turn dive. The turret's already dead. He's got four people there. A great Lulu wall pops up the team. Chouster's taking damage. So is Hotshot X Special. And the team sitting right in the middle of quite a bit of spirit fire damage. But they're or rather it's gonna be other damage coming from Twitches. That was the expunge. And they are moving back now. Double lift able to pretty much clear out and help, but it's gonna be an inhibitor for them. The two damage source is still alive for CLG. Double left really wants to try and pick someone off, but there's not an option for him there. Still barrened up three members of TSM. Let's see what Double Lift can do. They have to really Oh, they will be able to. The super say, minions are winning the battle. Yeah, I was going to say, they have even. a lot to do here, but they are going to be able to hold it off. Double lift almost going down to these super minions. <laughs> I was looking at the time, and I was like, 30 seconds per wave, he's going to get some help here. So the minions spawn out. They'll be safe for now, but TSM grabs more map control. As they come in, 16 to 10, 10,000 on the gold lead. These fights are completely in their favor. After seeing that one, they're not too hesitant to go in. So CLG is going to have to make all the right moves in this next engagement. Yeah, TSM, they've they've pretty much got the noose around CLG's neck and they just have to drop yeah, that trap exactly. door now. Looking around, Saris Embrace is Link, as you said, followed up on that as well. Reginald picking up one. The Void Stop not coming out for Reggie though. He goes right for that. Rabadon's looking for the more damage, still not going for the Zonias. Looks like he's just holding out with the Seraph Shield. You're going to see Dragon once again, a map going objective free as Team Solo Mid looks to push a bottom minion wave all the way home. 
And the thing about Nasus being TSM's main tank is that he was able to build all resistances here, but since his ultimate is guaranteed extra health on popping that, he doesn't have to worry about losing his V-Stacks or anything. Oh, Whoa. double lift gonna get sniped. Super initiation coming in for Reginald here. They are gonna have to cleanse that one off. But from his quick silver, they get the heal on, and it looks like they are gonna start to engage onto this fight. It will be the turret for them. The tank coming in. Actually, they're just face tanking this one. Coming out is Hotshot GG. Throws down the rupture. They all spread out and get it off there. We can hear the yells from the backside. Chouster goes in once again. He does grab the odd one special this time, but once again, it was the Nasus. He goes down in that instantly, just like last time, and it looks like they're gonna have this inhibitor. Four members of CLG now backtracking into their base, trying to guard this, but they only have their poke to say what not. TSM really just walking this one in now. This is gonna be the last inhibitor going down in a few more hits. There it goes. Wild Turtle picks that one up for himself. And it looks like they are. These shock blasts are continuously just shredding down CLG. They're not able to trade half the damage that's coming at them. That equals a dead double lift. It looks like they're going to go for a double Nexus oh, and the Nexus. There's, the one nexus of those, there's one of those spears we were waiting for. <laughs> Finally get it at the end of the game. The icing on the cake. It's actually going to be in favor of TSM, though. 19 to 12 in a 38-minute matchup. Your fourth game of the day. TSM takes out CLG.